Our Glasnevin campus is in Glasnevin itself, um, and the St. Patrick's and All Hallow campuses are in Drumcondra. So as you said, they're a short bus journey or a walk away if somebody finds themselves between lectures on two campuses, or if you maybe are living on one campus but studying on another. So kind of rates and information. Um, so what we'll ask you to do is we will ask for the 50 euro application fee to be paid initially for your application to be considered valid. If you are offered a room in our lottery that I was just describing, to secure your room offer or to confirm that, we'll ask you for a deposit of 250 euro to hold your place. Um, and then when it comes closer to the move-in date or when term starts to begin, that's when we'll ask for the rental rates to be paid. So if you're staying on campus for a full academic year, which usually is from September, in this case, September 2021 to May 2022, we're going to ask your rent to be paid in two installments, one for each term, semester one and semester two, and we'd ask for those to be paid before moving in. So a little timeline would be when you're applying online, which are open at the moment, we'll ask for your 50 euro application fee. If you are offered a room in our upcoming lotteries, we'll ask for a 250 euro on top of this 50 euro as a deposit to secure your room. And then closer to the move in date, it's typically about one month before moving in. So mid to late August, we'd ask for your semester one rent to be paid. Now the rental rates will vary on what type of room you choose. And we do different sizes or different ratios and um, how many students live in one house. But this year they're going from kind of mid 5,000 to early 6,000 euro. Um, unfortunately, we don't yet have our rates signed off for 2021-22, um, but we do anticipate that these will be known in the next two to three weeks. So if you keep an eye on our website, as I mentioned, DCU accommodation, once we have the published rates for next year, we'll be putting those up online, uh, but it shouldn't vary too much. So kind of the student experience and the last topics you wrapped up on uh, a few minutes ago would be, you know, the added benefits of your actual studies at DCU or why is it handy to live up? Of course, it cuts the commute. For some people, they might live further away in Ireland and that it's not possible for them to commute. They just like having the social aspect of living on campus. So we run a Res Life program. So essentially, that's kind of all the bits and bobs around what we can do to make your time in our accommodation enjoyable or to help you meet friends or things like that. And um, so an example here, just of the little list we've done or things we've done in the past. Um, right now, we're coming up to Valentine's Day, Pancake Tuesday, Chinese New Year. So, for example, the team in our office um, at the moment are organising Pancake Tuesday. So our residents are invited to the reception area um, to have some pancakes, to meet other residents, to talk with our team. Um, it's just a nice chance to meet in a more casual setting. Um, and we do take on board kind of what students like or what events went well. We might run more of those. And um, if anybody ever requests a specific type of uh, activity, we take that on board and we run those type of things. And this is all included in your rent. It doesn't cost anything to enter our Res Life program. And um, it's more just for social engagement and to put yourself out there. And um, so that's what I've got so far. I'm just going to go through the Q&A now because that's how it was mainly driven the last time. Um, and I can see the questions here. So if you don't get enough points in your leaving cert um, to do your course of study at DCU, will you get your money back? Yeah, so I understand the way in which it works is um, as an incoming first year student, our applications are currently open. They'll close on the 19th of March. So we do ask that you've made your application by the 19th of March. We then run our lottery to assign all our applications on file to bedrooms and You'll know on, at this stage from our lottery whether you've been awarded a room on the 23rd of March and on the 23rd we'll ask you to pay your deposit payment. So by the 23rd of March if you have received a bedroom we'll ask you for 250 euro deposit on top of your application fee but of course this is going to be in March of this year you haven't done your leaving cert yet and you don't know your points or whether you'll come to DCU so if it does transpire that if you're unfortunate not to get your chosen course of study we are happy to offer you a full refund of your application fee and your deposit. You would just need to get in touch with us by email to let us know because that is the case every year. So on the flip side of that, if in March on the 23rd, you log in and unfortunately you haven't received a bedroom, and we would really encourage you to keep your application on file and not to ask us to cancel or give you your 50 euro refund of the application fee at that time. It just means if that does happen that somebody maybe has been given a bedroom but hasn't got their course of study at DCU and um, 
that they would cancel their room. And as rooms become available, we do enter into more lotteries. So we typically have two to three lotteries. One would be in March, maybe another midsummer about June or July, and then one a little bit closer to the move-in date when the CAO offers come out and the leaving cert results come out. Just that if any rooms do end up becoming free, that those who are really still looking or on a waiting list or you know, want to be considered do get another chance. So the lottery, just to reiterate again, I see a question here on that, is on the 23rd of March and our application closure date is the 19th of March. Um, I see a question here from an international student. So they said, I live in Belgium and I applied via CAO. Do I apply for accommodation through the normal route or as an international student? Well, when you go online, it's going to ask you for your student classification. So if you're not coming from Ireland and you are coming from abroad, um, I would encourage you to apply as an international student. And then it will give you the option to select your year of study. So depending on what year of study you're going into in your bachelor's, um, you can classify that down through making an application. Um, another question being, what percentage of first years that apply usually get accommodation? Um, varies across all of our campuses. We usually have a rate of about four to one. So we would have four times the demand um, based off our supply. So unfortunately, we would love to have more. Um, as I said, that's why we run it in a lottery scenario. Um, so that's why we unfortunately don't have enough for everyone, but it is split throughout the years. And um, if I just go back here a little bit in my presentation, I can show you guys um, how many places we actually do have for the first year students. So we've 360 available places on our Glasnevin campus, and we've 238 available places on our St. Patrick's campus and a further 112 in all hallows. So if I surround those up, we have just over 700 places for our first year students. Um, so we, we do try to please everyone, but unfortunately it's not always the case. Um, in other questions that we have, um, can I defer my accommodation application for the following year? Um, if you do receive a place to study at DCU, um, but you maybe don't want to take up our accommodation for this coming September, we do ask that you cancel the accommodation. So it's, it's not possible to carry it through to next year, just for the same reasons as it's a lottery process, but we do invite you to make a new application next year. So your application fee or your deposit is refundable this time around if you choose not to take a room, but we'd ask you to enter the process again from fresh next year. And can you only send in one application for one accommodation? Yes, that is the case. So because we'll ask you to make a student profile, each student would have one unique profile and there's the ability only to make one application per student. So that's just in the interest of fairness as well. Each person who applies has one slot in the lottery before the lottery is run. And somebody is asking here, so international students, are they included in the lottery or is there a separate allocation for places? So as an international student, you would be associated with our DCU international office. And um, I'm sure there has been a call with them. There probably has been or will be one coming up soon. Um, we do enter all international students into our general lotteries. So for example, if you were a first year international student, you will be included in our lottery on March 23rd. But there is also um, an allocation to the international office. Um, we usually have at least 100 guaranteed places for international students um, that are managed by the international office. So they would allocate those um, and decide on who goes into them. But you do have an equal chance as opposed to being a domestic student um, as well. So somebody is wondering if I do pay my 250 euro deposit, um, how much do I pay if successful? That will be depending on what type of room you choose. So when you apply online for us, we're going to show you the different areas where, our, where you may live. So as a first year, we'll show you all available first year blocks. We ask you to list preferences. So we'll ask for three unique preferences on where is your first you know, uh, preference on where you'd like to live, your second and your third. And when we run our lottery process, the system takes that into account. So we always try to give each student their first preference, but we do ask for the second and third that if it's not possible that you've got your first preference, we'll offer you your second or then again your third, depending on which one you're assigned and the rate associated to that particular block of housing, that would be your rental rate. But as I say, for the full academic year, based off this year's rates, um, which you haven't yet been signed off for next year, but off this year's rates, 
we're looking at mid 5,000 to early 6,000 for a full academic year. So that's split into two payments, one before the first semester, which we'd ask for in August, and one before the second semester, which we'd ask for in December or January. So uh, somebody asked, with COVID causing college to be entirely, on, uh, entirely online this year, if this is still the case in September with the 250 euro holding fee, if the student has college online and doesn't want to stay on campus, is a refund granted or how would that work? Yeah, so this year our policies have been a little more flexible. As we know, things are always changing with COVID. Um, but for example, um, at the present moment when university has announced it's online, this current semester, so semester two, 2020, 2021, right now from January to May, that's been announced as online. So all our current residents have been given the option um, from the university directive, if they'd like to move home and cancel their accommodation from study from home, we have given them the option of a refunded fee. Um, so in those type of cases, our policy will be depending on public advice at the time um, and governmental advice, but any updates like that and our policies, we will email them to you as soon as you have a profile on our system and you've made an application. We'll also put them up on our website, as I said, dcuaccommodation.ie, and we do have social media. So we're on Twitter and we're on Instagram and Facebook as DCU Res Life. So um, let me just have a look. So someone's asked if COVID is still about, do we have to pay the full fee even if we aren't using the room? So like I mentioned there, this current academic semester, we have given the students the choice if you'd like to move home or if studying on campus is not for you, you'd like to study from home. Because the university is fully online for the rest of the semester, and um, the university board decided that students can be refunded should they wish. Now, it's not a case where we can offer you a bedroom and you pay only per night that you stay on campus. It would be a case that we offer you a bedroom for the full contracted year. So it could be one full semester, two semesters, um, but whether you're contracted for semester one or semester two or both, you would be charged in line with the length of that term rather than the length of time you spend in your room. So it's a personal decision whether in some cases, depending on your timetable, um, is it something that you'd like to live up and study from campus or is it something that you'd rather study from home? But we do have all the facilities there, like even at the moment with college being a bit more online, um, we do have great Wi-Fi, we have study desks and lamps, um, you know, some people like to live up with others on their course to kind of form a little hub and study together. So we do still welcome residents um, and we offer as much support as we can at the moment. And then our first years put an accommodation together, are they mixed with other years? So we do have first year specific blocks. So all first years who live on our campuses, whether it's St. Patrick's, St. Patrick's itself is a fully first year campus and um, Glasnevin, our blocks here are Larkfield and Hampstead. And if you're a first year living in either Larkfield or Hampstead, they're also fully assigned first year blocks. So you'll be mixed with other first years um, who are studying various different courses. If you're living in Larkfield, there are two bedroom units. So each apartment is two bedrooms and you share a bathroom and kitchen. For the reasons of sharing a bathroom, you'd share with another student that's the same gender as yourself. Or if you lived in Hampstead, which are five bedroom apartments, each room here is a single or a double ensuite, so you have your own bathroom, um, and that means that the apartments are mixed gender. So you're living with other boys and girls, but again, all first year students, you just share your living and kitchen area between yourself and four other housemates. So that's got through all the questions we have for the moment. And um, what it might be useful for you guys, or what I'll show you now, is I'm just going to show you our website and a little bit of the layout or where you'd find information on the rates or what the rooms look like. And I'll just give you a quick overview of what it looks like when you're actually applying or how to apply. So there's just one more question here before I flick over to the website. I can come back if we get any further. Um, do many students studying in St. Patrick's campus stay in Glasnevin? And um, again, like I was saying, it's a bit of a personal preference. We don't take record of our residents what course that they're studying. So we don't have an exact record of how many people studying educational courses are living on Glasnevin. Um, but it's just down to, it could be um, where others who you know are living, if you'd like to live in Glasnevin there, or if you'd like to live near um, maybe some more of the sports facilities or the student support. Um, some people choose to live in Glasnevin, but even if you are living on Glasnevin and you're studying in Pats, you're less than a 10 minute journey by bus and you can walk that as well or take the um, 
the biking scheme that we have between campuses. So it's never a big issue if you do need to commute between two campuses. So I'm just going to show you now our website. So we recently just um, updated our information on the website. So this is the first thing you'll see when you come in on our homepage. Of course, we have a flag there to try to keep things as simple as possible. This is where you would click to apply and I'll show you that in a moment. But if you're looking as an incoming first year or even some people there in the Q&A were international students, you just go to our drop down menu on rooms. So you click on here. This is broken down into three subsections, the application information, the room types and prices and the frequently asked questions. So here on the application information, it just reiterates those deadlines, which I saying. So of course we're past the 1st of February now, so our applications are open. They'll close on the 19th of March and it just kind of details a little more on our lottery process. So as long as you all have your applications in by the 19th of March, you'll be put into our lottery on the 23rd. It gives a little more here about your deposit due. So if you do get a room on March 23rd in our lottery, whether you are successful or aren't successful, we will contact you all by email. So we'll let you know you have received your room or you maybe have not received your room. Please keep your application on file for our next upcoming lotteries. And we give one further week, so until April 4th, for that 250 euro deposit to be paid. If you maybe received a room in our lottery and decide it's not for you and, and you don't want to live on campus, if you just do not pay your deposit or get in touch with us to cancel, we'll release that room and we'll offer it to another student via a lottery again. So this is just a kind of an important dates section that you'll get to when you hit application information. We'll have a look then at the room types and prices. So here you'll actually see a few more pictures and a, a bit more breakdown on what campuses we have or, or what type of accommodation we offer on each campus. So as I said, just bear in mind, please, that these rates are based off this current year. They are subject to review, but we do expect it in the next two to three weeks these to be finalised. And you'll then see a little note here to say 21, 22 rates. So that breaks it down there into our different types of accommodation, what you get in each room, the kind of differences are you'll see there possibly why there are different rates. For example, Larkfield, all bedrooms are single, whereas in Hampstead, we do offer some double bedrooms. So the double will come at a more expensive rental rate. And you'll see there St. Patrick's as well. So that's going to show you the different rates we have on the different campuses, um, a sample picture of each of our room types, and then FAQs. So we do try to think of as many as we can, but hopefully some coming into the Q&A function right now will be offered uh, here as well, if you guys want to look back at what was asked. Um, but this is kind of just given what, what's included in the room or what do you guys need to bring with you, either Wi-Fi, when can I move in, and questions such as that. So I'm just going to have a look back at the Q&A function again to see if we have anything more in. And um, just bear with me now. I'm not sure if I've actually lost the Q&A function. I don't see any more there in Lisa. I think you managed, I think you answered something crazy like 15 questions or something <laughs> in that. And I was thank probably you speaking much. very fast. I apologize everybody if I'm speaking so fast. I'm just trying to get to everyone so nobody feels like they they weren't answered or left out. Not at all. No, thank you for such a, a comprehensive overview of, of accommodation because naturally, you know, there's some difficult questions in there when even you guys aren't maybe sure what's going to happen. Um, but as you said, you know, you'll make sure to keep everyone up to date with any updates that come in, um, you know, with COVID or whatever. So if there's no more questions, you might give it another minute just in case someone's still typing. Yeah, there's um, just one or two that I actually have in my brain. With the applications being open, we do tend to get some in by email or via social media, which are common. So I know a lot of people who, if they're coming for their leaving cert year, um, if they have friends or, or people who are studying in their secondary school who they know are possibly coming to DCU and want to live on campus as well. It might be nice sometimes, especially coming new to accommodation or to campus. People like to share with others that they know. So if it's a case that you do want to share with a friend of yours or somebody who you know from your area or who's studied at the same school as you, and um, we don't accept apartment share requests just at the moment. And um, once we've run our lottery, if it's the case that yourself and your friends know that you have been offered a room at DCU and you want to go ahead and accept your offer, we at that time will take the request. So you just need to get in touch by email and both parties, or if there's more than two people, each person we'd like to share this gets in touch with us so we have a record and we can assign you both to the same apartment, whether that's Larkfield that you both live exclusively together or Hampstead that you might live with others because that's up to five students. So it is possible to live with friends, family or people from your area 
we just do ask that you firstly are both assigned a bedroom and um, before we can put you living together in our system. So that's something which comes up a little bit. Um, I suppose the main focus I know came through in the Q&A a lot of times, but just to reiterate to everybody, if you do secure a room in the lottery and you later just decide for your own reasons that you don't want to live on campus, you maybe didn't get your course to study at PCU, um, or if for some reason you need to cancel, the fees that you have paid are fully refundable. You just need to let us know prior to moving in. So our email address for everybody, if you ever need to contact us, it's campus.residences at DCU. I do understand that's a little bit of a tongue twister, so I'm just going to go back to the website um, and show you. So it's just here on our website, and of course you can call as well. So from our perspective, I suppose something that that's pushed me to remind me of is we do have an accommodation reception. We have our own specific team on campus. So when you're leaving on campus, we have a reception area. We're open seven days a week. So we're there really to support the students. So we do things such as if you order postage or packages to come to campus. And um, I know a lot of people love to do the online shopping. We're always jealous of the office that coming through. And uh, we'll sign for that for you. And um, if you have questions or you have any maintenance issues or queries about your room, our team are there to help you on that. And um, if you need help with the laundry services, and we'll help you with that. So from a campus residence's perspective, and um, while you're on campus, we do have an on-campus laundrette. We are actually based our office itself within the sports complex. So if you're living on campus, you're right next to all the facilities. And I know a lot of people love going to the gym or just having that option there. Um, we have on-campus security 24-7. So, um, you know, whether there's any disturbances or you have something that you'd like to report or just that peace of mind, it's great to know that we have the on-campus security. And then when you're living on campus, of course, we're in um, the Dublin area. So there's lots of facilities nearby. But if things such as we have a little supermarket or a deli on campus, like you said, we have the restaurants, we have the cafes. So you're never going to go hungry or thirsty anyway once you're on campus. So... Um, just checking before we finish up, has there been any new questions come through the Q&A? I don't see any come in, so I think you're all questioned out. You're probably good to go, uh, Lisa, whenever you want. But again, thank you so much for that overview and certainly um, great advice for students who are looking to apply and who probably have never been through this process before. So it's great that they had a, an opportunity to speak with you directly. Um, but as you said, there's the number and the email address there if anyone does want yeah. to get in touch. Um, and I'm sure, you know, if, if you have any queries and you can't remember the accommodation, you know, website or whatever, we would have sent you this email today to get the link for this Zoom uh, webinar from studenthelp at dcu.ie. So you can always just reply back and be like, sorry, I forgot, you know, and, yeah. and, and we can we can make contact with Lisa then. Yeah, so we're always happy to get any, any questions or queries in. If you guys do email in, it's me who's answering them. So, <laughs> so you might recognize the name, but don't worry. Um, but main thing is, Get on the applications now, get yourself nice and organized. Of course, when you're applying, we're gonna ask you for the preferences, like I said. So just have a little familiarization with the different types of room we offer here, just so you know what rates that that room is coming at and what that room looks like or what it does or doesn't come with. So you're happy with your choices. And then hopefully everyone who's online having a look today will all be assigned rooms in our lottery. So March 23rd, we're gonna get in touch by email and that's to everybody, whether you are successful or unsuccessful. Just one little last plea, please do not cancel your application if you're not successful at first, because it is quite common that come the second or third round lotteries or with the leaving sort of CAO results, that if you didn't get a room the first time around, you may get a room the second time around. But as I said, during the lottery process or kind of as we develop more in towards the next academic year, that's when people would usually have most of their queries. So you can contact us at any time even though we are on campus accommodation and we're kind of mainly focused on offering you accommodation for the academic year, we are on hand all year round 24 seven and our reception are there seven days a week. So there's really no bad time to get in touch. That's great, Lisa. Thank you so much for, for coming on to our weekly webinar and we'll be sure to pass on any queries and um, that come back if there are any uh, so yeah. just as I finish up um, and thank you everyone for, for staying with us so far it's just six o'clock so just before I leave um, we'll just direct you to kind of uh, other other email addresses that you can get in touch with for for anything whether it's about accommodation and um, clubs and societies any course that I mentioned today we're putting as much content online as possible so you can find us on dcu.ie forward slash cao and we have everything that you need to know, whether it's about podcasts, 
Chatser blog speaking about um, undergrad courses. Uh, we have UniBuddy, which is a free chat service where you can chat directly to our student ambassadors, um, you know, free of charge and just ask them any questions that you want about the courses. In conversation with happens every Wednesday evening where I chat to two students from two different courses in DCU. And again, another opportunity for you to come on and actually ask questions live to someone who is studying a course that you're interested in. And we are most active over on um, Instagram on team.dcu. So if you have your phone handy, you can scan that QR code um, through your camera and it can bring you to our Instagram account. So uh, it's a great way to just gain some, I suppose, informal information about the university. So if you just want to watch a couple of short Instagram stories about a particular course, or maybe you want to know about our next live event, you can find that all on team.dcu. And we're also on Snapchat and on TikTok as well. Finally, then your own journey to DCU. So um, today's webinar, and thank you so much for tuning in. Hopefully that's given you a nice kind of overall feel for the university. You might then stay connected with us. So you might follow us on Instagram or maybe see one of our open day videos or you know, chat directly with an ambassador just to get some more information. We did have our virtual open day on November 21st and everything that was spoken about on that day was recorded and it is on again dcu.ie forward slash CAO. And our next open day, our spring open day will be on the 17th of April. So again, if you want to learn more about anything that you heard today, there'll be a designated talk for that at the spring open day. And then maybe you might find that we are a good match for you and you might put DCU on your CAO. So again, thank you so much for tuning in today. And thank you very much to Lisa for that um, fantastic talk about DCU accommodation. We do have a general inbox for student queries, which is studenthelp at dcu.ie. That's the email that you got um, the, the Zoom link from today. So again, any questions about anything that we spoke about uh, during this talk today please do get in touch and let us know or alternatively just message us on social media and um, but as i said i'll be back next week from five to half five to talk about the overall kind of feel for dcu and then from half five we will be joined by um paul o'brien from dcu uh, sports offices so if you are interested in a sports scholarship make sure to tune in next week and again you can ask your questions live so thank you very much everyone for tuning in and uh, we'll see you next week